On today's show, I have the honor of sharing with you one of the country's most honored legacies. Citizens who stood in the face of adversity and not only created a platform to be heard, but built an organization that has evolved into the largest group of people who have made it their sole purpose to remember and teach about our nation's historical legacy, to educate and insist in the development of an enlightened nation, and to cherish our American patriotism and the blessings and liberties for all Americans. I dare say that for 125 years, the Daughters of the American Revolution have not only preserved our American history, but have become a cornerstone of its core. Welcome to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbart. A great looking redesign and three good reasons to buy a Jerry Damson Honda Accord over a Toyota Camry. The Accord, like you've never seen it before, restyled and ready. As usual, the Honda engine delivers more range on a tank of gas. Dual zone climate control comes standard and only the Accord has five star ratings in all three critical safety categories. The Honda Accord, only $199 a month at Jerry Damson Honda. This is the satisfaction. French Millstone in Athens, Alabama is one of the South's largest suppliers of natural stone to the public. Our stone yard features an extensive selection of ready-to-use veneers, flagstone, fieldstone, pavers, boulders, and much more. Our stone mill cuts and shapes limestone utilizing CAD machinery as well as beautiful hand-carved details by skilled artisans. These products include fireplaces, window and door surrounds, columns, pool coping, and veneers. For more information, visit FrenchMillstone.com. Van Valkenburg and Wilkinson Realtors, locally owned, family operated, and specializing in fine homes and historic properties throughout the North Alabama area for over 30 years. Our mission is to provide superior real estate services and help each client every step of the way. From your first home to your finest estate, trust the name you've known for years. Van Valkenburg and Wilkinson Realtors, on the web at vvwrealtor.com or call 256-539-0505. In the first 100 years after its fight for independence, America, more concerned with its future than its brief past, was absorbed alternately with forming and refining its own unique democracy, exploring and expanding the continent, fighting another war with England in 1812, and reuniting our nation after the bitter battles of the Civil War. At the end of that war, the country was free again to pursue what it considered its manifest destiny, to occupy the continent from sea to shining sea. As the United States marked 100 years in existence, a new cinema arose to connect with its founding history. In the spring of 1876, Philadelphia hosted the Centennial Exposition, which helped give rise to the era of colonial revival. Following the Centennial Exposition, Suddenly, the art and architecture, personal possessions, and histories of the founding fathers and mothers became American treasures to be preserved. Patriotic organizations began to form, including the Sons of the American Revolution in 1889. Initially, the daughters thought to join the Sons of the American Revolution, but at a meeting of the Sons in Louisville, Kentucky on April 30, 1890, the sons voted to exclude women, galvanizing a force as determined as that which fought for American independence. As Lolita Green Stevenson would later write in her 1913 account of the society's foundings, it became apparent that if women were to accomplish any distinctive patriotic work, it must be within their own circle under their own leadership. One of these women, Mary Smith Lockwood, widow of a Union soldier, noted author and women's rights advocate, channeled her reaction in a stirring letter to the Washington Post printed on July 13, 1890. In it, she recounted the thrilling story of heroic Hannah Arnett, who in 1776 courageously challenged 
a meeting of men hosted by her husband in their home, shaming them into supporting the cause of the revolution instead of surrendering to the British troops. Mary Lockwood ended her letter with these questions. Were there no mothers of the revolution? Where were the sons and daughters of the revolution place Hannah Arnett? Her questions would be answered swiftly by hundreds and serve as a catalyst for action. William O. McDowell, one of the founders of the Sons of the Revolution, reacted quickly and strongly when the Sons voted against allowing women to join the DAR. McDowell was the great-grandson of Hannah Arnett and immediately after reading Lockwood's letter in the Post, penned his own response, published on July 21, 1890, stating, in the hands of the women of America, patriotic understandings have never failed. Why not, therefore, invite the formation of the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution? His letter concluded with the invitation to every woman in America who has the blood of the heroes of the Revolution in their veins to send their names and address to him. McDowell would attend the first organizational meeting and long serve as one of the advisors. Gatherings were held at various private residences during the summer of 1890 between the lead organizers, Mary Smith Lockwood, Eugenia Washington, Mary Dessa, and Ellen Harden Waldworth. The culmination of these meetings occurred on October 11, 1890. Mary Smith Lockwood hosted the first organizational meeting of the new National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution. Eighteen women attended as well as four of the six sons of the American Revolution, who would serve as the advisory board to the NSDAR in its first few years of existence. By the end of the meeting, 11 members had paid their dues and the DAR opened for business with $33 in the bank. Founder Ellen Harden Walworth would write in the February 1893 American Monthly Magazine, it is not a social organization. It is an order patriotic, historical, genealogical, and holds itself closely to these objects. During this first meeting at the urging of Mary Dessa, Mary Virginia Ellet Cabell became the first leader of the Daughters of the American Revolution. Mary Cabell rallied that the new society should be presided over by a lady prominent in the United States and began to seek out the person to fill the position. Preceded by a letter written by Mary Desha, Mrs. Cabell, and Mr. McDowell paid a visit to the First Lady of the United States of America, Carolyn Scott Harrison, asking her to serve as their president. The First Lady accepted, but only under the promise that Mrs. Cabell would perform the bulk of the responsibilities. So she was appointed Vice President Presiding and later President Presiding singular offices that only Miss Cabell ever held. Her home became the headquarters of the society in its first year. It was Mary Cabell who proposed the building of a house beautiful, the first, the finest building ever owned by women, one that would serve as an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. She would live to see not only the realization of her vision in Memorial Continental Hall, but also the Administrative Building and Constitution Hall. She died July 4, 1930 at the age of 91, the same day in history marked by our American independence. Non-traditional women were some of the first to join the new National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution. Included in the approximately 850,000 application papers maintained by the DAR, is that from women's rights pioneer Susan B. Anthony. In a letter to the Kentucky DAR in 1897, she wrote, I hope you will be exceedingly careful to distinguish those actions in which our revolutionary mothers took part. She became a member of the Arakoria chapter in Rochester, New York in 1898. Anthony was a descendant of Daniel Reed, a private in the Continental Army and a composer who later became only the second American composer to publish a collection of his own music. The Daughters' First Continental Congress was held on February 22, 1892 in the Church of Our Father on 13th and L Street in Washington, D.C. 
before they could adjourn, Matthew B. Brady, one of the most renowned photographers of his day, asked for the privilege of making a photographic group of the society to be added to his historical collection of the most eminent people in the world. His image would capture not only the four founders, but also the first president general, Caroline Scott Harrison, which is in the center, as well as the only member ever to hold the title of vice president presiding, Mary Virginia Cabell, to Mrs. Harrison's right. And Mrs. Harrison's left are the founders, Eugenia Washington and Mary Dessa. Standing behind Mrs. Harrison and Mrs. Washington are founders, Ellen Walsworth and Mary S. Lockwood. Since its founding in 1890, the DAR has admitted more than 950,000 members. When we return, we'll take a look at the incredible education endeavors of the DAR. Stay tuned. There's nothing like seeing it for yourself. Inline Lighting has an impressive showroom near you, where you can see everything from gorgeous traditional classics to the most contemporary styles. Our certified lighting specialists are educated to help you find the perfect fixture for any space. Love your current lighting but want to save energy? We can help you there too. Inline Lighting, always open at inlinelighting.com. You're watching Southern Heirlooms with Ken Rivenbark. We'll be right back. Welcome to Rivenbark and Roper Antiques, Huntsville's finest antique gallery. For the past 10 years, my gallery has represented high quality antiques from the 18th to the early 20th centuries. The largest collection of silver in North Alabama, Chinese and Japanese export porcelains, and original art from around the world. From day one, I have focused the business on three principles that are the essence of Riva Bark and Roper Antiques. I take great pride in providing my clients with the highest quality merchandise at the lowest possible prices, offering hospitality and personal service to build a relationship of trust and to celebrate with customers the joy of bringing beauty, style, and elegance to their home. The strengths of my business are reflected in my dedicated customers. Customers know when they engage in business with Rivenbark and Roper, they can count on truth, knowledgeable information, and customer dedication. Established in 1978, Randy Roper Interiors is the premier interior design firm for residential and commercial projects. The goal at Randy Roper Interiors is to work with each client to create a beautiful, warm, and comfortable space that reflects your individual tastes. Randy Roper Interiors offers one of the largest resource design libraries in Alabama and is located at 311 North Jefferson Street in downtown Huntsville. Randy Roper Interiors, where experience matters. Welcome back to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbart. One of the three core objectives of the Daughters of the American Revolution is education. Since 1903, the Society has been helping children in remote mountain areas receive an education. The DAR supports two schools in Appalachian region, the Kate Duncan Smith DAR School in Alabama and the Tamasee DAR School in South Carolina. Kate Duncan Smith School, founded on Gunner Mountain in 1924, is a day school, kindergarten through 12th grade, serving an area of 100 square miles. Enrollment averages 1,300 students yearly. Special emphasis is placed on responsible citizenship, academic achievement, and horticultural and computer skills. Preparation for college and vocational trainings are important parts of the curriculum. The Kate Duncan Smith DAR School is located in the Appalachian area of Northeast Alabama, high on Gunner Mountain. The school is located in Grant and Marshall County. The Kate Duncan Smith School is a unique school in that it is owned and operated by the DAR and governed and staffed by county school systems. This is the only K-12 school in the United States of its kind. Tamasee DAR School is a private 501c3 nonprofit children's home and family service organization offering multifaceted programs to serve children and families with a variety of needs. Their programs and service include seven childcare homes that serve up to eight to 10 residential children, a middle school academy program, an aftercare program for reunited families, and students enrolled in college are living independently. 
and a daycare program serving infants, toddlers, and after-school children in the community. Tamasee DAR School was founded by the South Carolina State Society of the DAR and accepted as a national project by the National Society of DAR in 1921. Since that time, thousands of children have received a loving home, an excellent education, and the love of a professional caring staff. The Cross North School in North Carolina was founded in the early 1900s to give the children from the mountains and the foothills of North Carolina a home while attending public schools in Avery County. Today, the Cross North School provides a sanctuary of hope and healing to children from families in crisis through residential group homes. Quality education at Williams Academy, an on-site charter school, and a variety of therapeutic, recreational, and spiritual programs. The Hillside School, Incorporated in Massachusetts, was founded in 1901 as a rural home for boys who were orphaned or otherwise without a home or family. It now provides a structural and supportive environment for students with learning problems. Hinman Sediment School in Kentucky was founded in 1902 to provide an educational opportunity for the youth of the mountains. Its major educational emphasis today is its work with students with dyslexic characteristics. This is the only program of its type within 200 miles. It also offers adult basic education or GED program. The DAR, through its American Indians Committee, assists in the education of Indian youth through scholarships and support of Bacone College in Muskegee, Oklahoma, the oldest continuing institution of higher learning in Oklahoma, and the Chimawa Indian School in Salem, Oregon. Each of these schools is given financial assistance by the DAR members, including scholarships, material donations, and genuine personal interest. Over $1 million is given annually by the DAR to support these schools. Good citizenship and love of country are taught at all of these schools. To the daughters of the American Revolution, bravo on a job well done. Thank you for the educational endeavors that have changed the lives of so many Americans. You're watching Southern Heirlooms with Ken Rivenbart. We will be right back. To say you've worked too hard to let this economy jeopardize your future would be an understatement. While you don't have control over today's markets, you do have control over how well prepared you are for the future. That's where the Keen Group at UBS Financial Services Incorporated in Huntsville can help. Wealth Management Advisors Penny and Tom Keen will create a plan that can help you weather the uncertain markets while keeping you on track. Call or visit our website, The King Group, at UBS Financial Services Incorporated in Huntsville. Member FINRA SIPC. Peace Loving Animals is an animal rescue facility located in Tanner, Alabama, where we educate the community on the humane treatment of animals, caring for abandoned strays, and finding homes for unwanted yet lovable pets. You could be the voice for an abandoned animal by supporting Peace Loving Animals today. This advertisement is proudly sponsored by Keystone Laboratories of Decatur, Alabama, helping protect the public health and environment through quality testing. Welcome back to Southern Heirlooms. I'm Ken Rivenbart. The National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution was founded on October 11, 1890, during the time that was marked by a revival in patriotism and intense interest in the beginnings of the United States of America. Women felt the desire to express their patriotic feelings and were frustrated by their exclusion from men's organizations, perpetuating the memory of ancestors who fought to make this country free and independent. As a result, a group of pioneer women in the nation's capital formed their own organization, and the Daughters of the American Revolution has carried the torch of patriotism ever since. In 2015, the Daughters of the American Revolution celebrated their 125th anniversary. I would like to welcome back to Southern Heirlooms for the second time, Mrs. Sybil Wilkinson. Sybil recently received the Daughters of the American Revolution National Medal of Honor for 2016. The DAR National Medal of Honor is a prestigious award presented to American citizens 
for outstanding contributions to the nation. Those who have shown outstanding qualities of leadership, trustworthiness, service and patriotism, and have made unusual and lasting contributions to our American heritage by truly giving of themselves to their community, state, country, and fellow man. Sybil, congratulations on receiving the National DAR Medal of Honor, and thank you for the many esteemed contributions you have made to our nation, and especially the state of Alabama. Thank you, Ken, and thanks to the DAR. This was an honor that I never expected. Well, but it was, was well deserved. <laughs> But in the winter of my life, I pledge that I will try to live up to the honor that they have given me. Absolutely. Now, I want you to share with our viewers some of your opinions of the DAR. So I have two questions for you. What do you admire most about the Daughters of the American Revolution? I admire most the uh, fact that they are such true Americans and they believe in Americanism and I like their mottos that they want to promote patriotism and preserve American heritage. I love it. I love it. And my second question, as a 92 year old civic leader and I've asked permission to use her age, <laughs> what advice would you offer young women of today in regards to preserving our American heritage? Well, I think they should study all they can about American history. They don't teach that enough in schools anymore, but they should read about it, join clubs that are, you know, that will promote American history and always do the best they can and for our country. Why do you feel like it's important to know our history, remember our history? Because if you don't know the history, there's no future. Interesting. That's what I Thank think. Thank you. I agree. Thank you. I recently had the opportunity to attend a chapter meeting and was fascinated to hear and see the incredible works that are taking place under the umbrella of this organization. One portion of the meeting that stuck with me the most was the group recitation of William Tyler Page's The American Creed. The American Creed states, I believe in the United States of America as a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, whose just powers are derived from the consent of the governed, a democracy and a republic, a sovereign nation of many sovereign states, a perfect union, one and inseparable, established upon those principles of freedom, equality, justice, and humanity for which American patriots sacrifice their lives and fortunes. I therefore believe it is my duty to my country to love it, to support its constitution, and to obey its laws, to respect its flag and defend against all enemies. I have another guest with me today who also recently received a national award, Dale Rhodes. Dale was honored as a National DAR Woman of the Arts winner for 2016. The award is given to recognize and honor a woman who has made significant achievements at the community level in her artistic field. Dale focuses on preservation and collections of early American artifacts and detailed needlework that she generously shares with various civic organizations as fundraisers. Dale, welcome to the show, and thank you for, one, being such a supporter of Southern Heirlooms and sharing your vast knowledge of our American history through the lineage of your family. And two, thank you for all you do for our community and state in bringing attention to our nation's history via memorabilia that revives the lives and faces of our forefathers and mothers in retelling our nation's history. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. I also have a couple questions for you regarding the DAR. First one, what has most resonated with you about your involvement in the Daughters of the American Revolution? It's all the good things we do in so many areas. We support the DAR school in Grant. Mm -hmm. We support our uh, men and women in uniform as well as the Tut Fan Veterans Home. 
we support any good patriotic cause that comes along. That's incredible. My second question, how will the work of the DAR prepare our society for the future? I think I agree with Sybil that if we don't teach our children the real American history and live it so they can learn from us, um, it's not going to be much of a future. I think our future is based on our past, and if we forget our history, we'll repeat the same mistakes. And our past may be good or bad, but it is our past, and we've learned from it, or we hope to learn from it yes. and move forward in, mm -hmm. in, our, in making new history. In local minutes from a Daughters of the American Revolution meeting in May of 1934, I found an interesting reflection that sums up the courageous work of this organization and one that could easily reflect today's society in 2016. Reports from the 43rd Continental Congress were given by Ms. Helen Petty. She read excerpts from Mrs. Magna's address before this Congress, on which Ms. Magna stated, Last year, I called on you for courage. This year, my hope for you is faith. Faith in ourselves, faith in our society, and faith in our own government and our country. Along with the many instructive and informative things, she tells us the DAR has been a force and power for good for 43 years through the loyalty of its members who give their services without financial remuneration. This is indicative of the loyalty of women and the stability of the society. On behalf of all American citizens, thank you to the Daughters of the American Revolution for establishing your organization as a cornerstone of our American history. Your organization broke through the window of isolation for American women and proved that the valor of your intellect and the gallantry of your leadership your ideals encompass the well-being of every American citizen. You have continuously honored and recognized the contributions of the men and women who led, who bled, and died to secure the rights we hold dear in the United States of America. Today, I honor you, the Daughters of the American Revolution. With a heart full of gratitude, I'm Ken Rivenbart. You're watching Southern Heirlooms with Ken Rivenbart. The purpose of the show is to touch and embrace lives to the joy of celebrating family histories, creating new traditions, and preserving your treasured family heirlooms. This show presents informative segments that educate, inspire, and challenge you, the viewer, to learn more about your heirlooms as objects of beauty, as well as utilize them to learn about more about your family heritage. I hope you'll join me for the next episode as well as follow the show on our website at southernheirloomstv.com and like us on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Google+, LinkedIn, and Instagram.